All right. Thank you, everyone, for bearing with us for a few minutes. It looks like we have quite a few people that have been able to log in, so we'll get started. So I want to thank everyone for joining us from all over the world, really, uh, depending on if it's morning, afternoon, or evening where you are. Thank you for taking the time to join us for this webinar. So to quickly introduce Via Global Health, for those of you that are not on the line that are verified distributors with us already, is we are a medical sourcing platform that connects and creates access to medical equipment for distributors and end users throughout the world. So we're connecting innovations that you see featured here, but even things like basic equipment and consumables as well, because we know those are very critical and crucial in these field hospitals and clinics throughout the world. We have been supporting the global health community for several years in over 25 countries and emerging markets. And we have over 40,000 products and we offer distribution channels and logistical support for some of the most innovative medical devices and global health innovations on the market. So as you can see here, as someone comes to the platform and an online catalog, they can search for any product they want from our, our large catalog, or they can also look through the different categories depending on what type of preference in product that they're looking for or specialty. Again, we do feature our innovations here. Uh, we also have our library of training videos, but then you can see some of our more popular products and latest news. Uh, just a quick little jump into the about section if you want to learn more about who VIA Global Health is or just learn about what um, people have said about working with us or see any additional videos. You can see the section here. You can see any kind of uh, support we've received from different partners, any uh, testimonials from our partners that either suppliers or distributors or end users, company videos, leadership, uh, and the latest news. So you can see any uh, awards, uh, trade shows we've attended, new hires, things like that. So again, I want to bring it back to the homepage and talk about these featured innovations. And the one we'd like to present to you today that we're proud to host is MSR and their SE200 Community Chlorine Maker. So you can find that here on our homepage in the featured innovations. And then when you click on that page, you can then be brought to the product page. And the benefit here is we list all the product information you could possibly need for your private inquiries or government tenders. So we know everyone asks about a short description, regulatory approvals, any type of images of the product being used in the environment or on a just pure product image shot. So you can see more about the detail of the product and what's included. But then as you come down, you can see additional product description, specifications, any clinical trials or studies that have been done, brochures, instructions, any kind of resources available there. And then some videos. So any of these product demonstrations or overviews of what it is or even something in the field here. And we'll come back to this video in a few minutes after Patrick takes you through uh, a short presentation. Uh, additional things, if you frequently ask questions, something that may come up from your customer, you can look here first and see if there's an answer before you need to come to us. And the benefit here is what we want to do is give you all the information that you need so that you're not required to spend days and weeks following up with suppliers and manufacturers, waiting for answers, waiting for quotes, waiting for brochures, when you can find that all here in minutes. So what it does is it makes it faster, easier, and more affordable for you to source the medical equipment needed. So for those of you on the line that are verified distributors with us already in, in the 25 countries that were represented, your page would obviously show pricing. But for those of you on the line that are not and that are new to this, you would come to this page and request a quote. That would then bring you to that quote page where you could then provide the number of products you're interested in your contact information, and then you could submit that. And that would send us an alert that you're interested in this product. And we would then follow up with a local distributor who could help you to source that product and bring it through customs and look, uh, final delivery. So with that, I will hand over to Patrick so he can take you through a, a more in-depth presentation and product demonstration as well. So with that, Patrick, the, the floor is yours. Great. Thanks, uh, Brian. We're really excited uh, to bring this to all of you and to be partnered with um, VIA Global Health to, um, to, to really get this uh, product out there in the world. Uh, we've had a lot of success so far, and we're really especially interested in bringing this uh, to the health community. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but first, um, you know, we're often asked who is MSR or MSR Global Health. Um, MSR started as uh, Mountain Safety Research, 
uh, back in 1972 here in Seattle, Washington in the United States. And um, over the last uh, 45 years, we've been uh, a quality manufacturer of um, all sorts of outdoor camping equipment uh, and then into military equipment. And in the, in the mid-90s, we um, became well-known in water treatment, and we have an in-house water uh, research lab as well as a microbiology lab here uh, in Seattle. And uh, we've used that uh, expertise to develop a number of uh, water treatment products for the U.S. military, uh, as well as work on a lot of uh, what we call global health-related projects with organizations like PACS uh, and the Gates Foundation and a number of others. And uh, one, of the, one of the products that we're really excited about that has, has come out of this work is this um, SC200 community chlorine maker. And we started this project uh, a long, long time ago, uh, starting with our military who needed a way to be able to treat water um, in, the, in the field using some sort of chemical disinfectant, but um, had no way to, uh, to make it on their own. So we made them a very miniature version. And then we realized that we could scale that up um, to be more effective for community uh, level water treatment and uh, infection prevention control in, in clinics. And so what is uh, the SC200? Very simply, it uses salt water and electricity from any 12 volt battery um, to make chlorine for water treatment and disinfection. Um, so the kit itself um, comes with the clip to be able to clip on to any 12 volt battery in a car, uh, car or motorcycle battery. Um, and then we also sell accessory um, power options to be able to plug it into a wall or a generator uh, or into uh, an adapter inside of a, a vehicle. Um, so we have a number of ways to power uh, the device. Um, so with this device, it's very versatile. Uh, we have a lot of different use modes. Uh, one, the main one that we, we created the device for was water treatment, um, as well as hygiene. You can um, chlorinate water to, for, for hand washing. Um, infection prevention within um, health facilities and surface sanitation. Um, also things like washing fruits and vegetables uh, for cooking or um, washing linens um, in uh, either at home or in health facilities uh, to, to kill off any um, bacteria or viruses that, that might be um, in those uh, contaminated uh, linens. Uh, and then lastly, because it is a fresh chlorine, it's not like a bleach that, would, that you would buy off, of the, off the shelf, um, it can be used also for wound disinfection. Uh, and there's a lot of science on chlorine for, for wound care, um, going back to um, the, the early 20th century. Um, you can uh, use the device at community water points. Um, there's lots of entrepreneurship models where people will uh, buy a device and then create chlorine and sell the chlorine. Um, we have had uh, a lot of success in medical clinics, both rural facilities all the way up to kind of district level uh, hospitals um, in a number of countries and uh, also in uh, schools for treating uh, water in, in schools where, where children bring the water to the school or whether they're get, um, getting the water and taking it home or just for what uh, what is needed at the school for, for cleaning the school, for cleaning uh, latrines, and for water treatment there. Um, and the, you'll see there a dosing chart. It just shows you kind of how you would use the, the device to mix uh, with what amount of, of water to be able to do each one of those things, whether it be uh, for drinking water or um, washing dishes or disinfecting uh, for Ebola. And so there's a number of those, and that, it, that chart is found on our product page on the uh, Via Global Health website. And so we designed this product specifically for low resource settings. Um, as you know, chlorine uh, is very widely used and widely accepted and trusted and been used in um, places like here like in the U.S. for well over 100 years to treat our water supply. 
Um, it's referred to in a number of ways, uh, whether it be chlorine or HTH powders or uh, bleach or uh, JIC in some parts of the world. So it's referred to in a number of ways, but they're all based on um, the chlorine as the chemical. And the issue with chlorine is the is that supply chain of um, the fact that it breaks down very quickly. It's uh, a hazardous material, so it's difficult to transport around the world. It can be very expensive in places. Uh, and so what we wanted to do is create a really low cost way to eliminate those supply chain issues with chlorine and allow people to make it on their own very, very simply. Um, and we co-developed this product with PATH. Um, and we field tested it in more than 10 countries around the world, um, and now we've, we've grown that and it's been used in about three dozen countries around the world. But we used all of those field trials and partner um, feedback and end user feedback that really drove the product development and made uh, the product what it is today. With that, we made it incredibly easy to use. Any type of chlorine generator products that are available are very complex and you have to have a little bit of knowledge in, in chemistry and a little bit of knowledge in just technical knowledge in how to operate them and there's a lot of steps of measuring uh, chlorine and uh, both going uh, during the process and after and so what we did is we created a smart chlorine generator so that you don't need any previous knowledge uh, about anything uh, in order to operate it. So we, we teach uh, primary school children how to use it and then they very quickly can teach others how to use it. It's that simple. Uh, we'll, do, we'll show you a demo uh, video at the, end of, uh, at the end of this here and you'll see just how easy it is. Um, but it's, it's designed to be nearly impossible to operate incorrectly. Uh, it will automatically adjust for the, the solidity in your salt brine. So if somebody adds a little too much salt, uh, then it'll adjust. If you don't have enough salt, it won't run. Uh, and it will, the same thing with power. If the, there's a power surge, it adjusts for that. Or if you don't have enough power, it'll, it'll automatically tell you and you know that you need to switch batteries or find a better, better power source there. And it will tell you that through colored indicator lights. Um, and then the smart circuitry that we have in there eliminates any need to measure because the device adjusts uh, for time and for the reaction. And so as it goes through the electrolysis process, it's constantly monitoring the consistency of the chlorine uh, that, is, that is being generated. And so when it hits a 0.8% chlorine uh, solution, it stops. And so you know that you have the same consistent uh, solution every time. Another uh, big advantage to this device is the the logistics are, are very, very simple. Um, it, there are no moving parts or replacement parts, so it can sit on a shelf for a really long time. Um, if you're, you want interested in using it for things like disaster uh, preparedness uh, or response, they can sit in a, in a warehouse uh, for a long time waiting for um, that uh, disaster. Uh, they can, and with that, that allows them to be easily pre-positioned. We um, the, the resupply is very simple because all you need is salt and power, which are um, as long as you have a, a vehicle around or um, some sort of solar power that can charge a battery uh, is widely, widely uh, available. And salt is, is also, we found, very available anywhere in the world, um, even during uh, disasters, um, you can find salt. Um, they're very small. The kit is uh, about uh, the size size of a lunchbox and uh, so it's not very not very large <clears throat> so you can put quite a few onto a pallet um, or into a container for um, shipping purposes and uh, really reduces that per unit shipping cost. Um, it can easily be carried on a plane uh, which might uh, not sound like a big deal but for disaster response efforts and, and emergency situations uh, you can't take chlorine on a plane. So uh, being able to take one of these devices and get what you need uh, to the, that area quickly uh, is, is a big benefit. Uh, and then we do offer a warranty as well on um, the manufacturing aspects of the device uh, for one year. Um, and it's really low cost. So the chlorine maker um, 
you have to think of it as a community device or a device for a clinic and not as a household at a household level. Um, our suggested retail price is $239. Um, pricing um, for the approved distributors is, is much lower, and you can find that through the via website. Um, but it'll be able to treat, if you're looking at it from a water treatment standpoint, treat water for a small community of at least 200 people um, for five years or more. And so when you break that down, it's very inexpensive, inexpensive on the capital cost side of it. Um, only about 24 cents per person per year, and then once you have once the uh, once the purchaser has overcome that capital cost, your operational costs on the device are extremely low, um, of about US five cents per 1,000 liters of water treated. Because again, all you need is salt uh, and water. So when you when you compare that to the cost of purchasing chlorine. Um, it, is, it is drastically lower, and so there's a very big return on investment with this uh, device. We've done a number of field trials with a lot of different uh, organizations and ac academic uh, universities and institutions, um, U.S. government, uh, UNICEF, World Vision, um, and so I just wanted to kind of show a number of them, and the, we've done these around uh, the world in a variety of settings, including schools, community water centers and kiosks, health facilities and health clinics, uh, community water points again, and in disaster response as well. And the feedback that we've received uh, across the board has been very, very positive, um, and that it's making a real big impact in these, uh, in these communities. So with that, um, I will show the video, <coughs> excuse me, that will walk you through the process of how it works and how you actually make chlorine um, with it. And then I'll, I'll be really happy to answer uh, any questions that anybody might have after that. Perfect. Okay. So again, you can find these videos on the, the uh, product page for the SE200. So I'll open this one just down here. Hi, my name is Zach Gleason. I'm the MSR Water Lab Manager, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the MSR SC200 Community Chlorine Maker. It comes in this little kit, which includes the electrochlorinator device, a power adapter for 12-volt battery, a salt water solution preparation and storage bottle, a starter packet of salt for making your first solution, a chlorine storage bottle, a couple of different measuring tools for ensuring you're adding the correct quantity of chlorine, a small packet of test strips for testing to ensure that you're actually getting the dose you desire, an instruction booklet, and then there are pictorial instructions printed on the inside of the box. The first step in preparing to make chlorine is producing the salt water solution. So to do that, I use my salt water solution bottle and I'm going to add salt to the fill line here on the bottom of the bottle. So remove the cap. It takes about 50 grams of salt for each run of the community chlorine maker. So I'm going to add my salt. Kind of level it out a little bit and make sure that I'm at the line or close to it. The next thing I'm going to do is add water. The water is added to the fill line on the bottle. Replace the lid and shake until all the salt is dissolved. The next thing you want to do when you're going to make chlorine is connect the, the system to power. So the, the kit comes with alligator clips for adapting to a 12 volt battery, but there are also options available for a vehicle adapter and for a wall outlet adapter. The first thing you do is connect your adapter to the device. Next, use your alligator adapters to connect to the positive and negative electrodes on the battery. 
it's important to use a 12 volt battery, but you can use any amperage from a, a normal vehicle battery to a motorcycle battery. When doing this, you should get indicator lights showing up on the actual device, showing that you have connected to power. The next step in the process, now that we have our salt solution prepared and our device connected to power, is to actually make the chlorine solution. So to do that, I'm going to add my brine water to the device, filling to the line on the side of the device. Then I'm going to push the power button once. This will start the electrolysis reaction. The white light indicates that it's working properly. As the electrolysis process begins, you're going to see bubbles forming and the light's going to continue to stay on white for five to seven minutes until the system is, run, is done running, at which point it will beep and you will know that you've successfully prepared your chlorine solution. Now that the run is complete, the next thing to do is to treat the water. This can be done uh, using the measuring cup or the scoop that comes with the kit. The scoop is designed to measure the correct amount to treat one 20 liter jerry can. The one run produces about 50 milliliters of 0.8% chlorine, which is sufficient to treat 200 liters of water, which is 10 20 liter jerry cans or one 200 liter barrel of water. You can dose directly from the device by pouring into the scoop, or if you want to dose it later, you can use the storage bottle that comes with the kit. This allows you to either transport the solution farther away from where you store the battery or to use it later in the day as it keeps this chlorine fresh for up to 24 hours. Now that I have my chlorine solution prepared, I'm going to use it to treat a 20 liter jerry can. To do that, I'm going to use the scoop that came with the kit. You want to make sure that you fill the scoop full. Next, I'm going to remove the lid from my jerry can. You want to take care to make sure you get all of the chlorine solution into the container. And it's a good idea to either mix or stir the container to ensure that the chlorine is evenly spread throughout. And you're going to wait 30 minutes before consuming any of the water to ensure that all the micros have been eliminated. Now that we've waited 30 minutes to ensure that the water's been treated, we want to confirm that sufficient chlorine was added by using the provided test strips. Take one out of the foil packet and move it back and forth in a small sample of water for two to five seconds. Once the color has developed, Compare it to the scale on the outside of the packet to ensure that the sufficient amount of chlorine has been added. As you can see, we're between 1 and 2 ppm of chlorine added, which is exactly where we want to be to make sure our water is safe. The next thing I want to talk to you about is how to know what's going on when the device doesn't operate. There's two main reasons that it won't run. The first is insufficient power. What will happen is when you connect it to a battery that doesn't have enough power and you try to run it, you will get a red error light immediately. That's how you know that it's time to charge your battery. The other issue that can occur is that you can have not enough salt in your brine water solution. If that's the case, when you add it to the device and try to operate it, you'll get a purple indicator light and the run won't complete. This can either happen immediately, as it just did, or partway through the run, depending on how much brine you do have in your solution. In order to maintain the device, it's important to rinse it before you store it. If you don't, white crystals like this will develop inside and outside of it. To get rid of them once they have developed, all you need to do is rinse with a vinegar or water solution. All of the crystals should re-dissolve, and then you can easily dispose of them.
Thank you for joining me for this tutorial on the MSR SC200 Community Chlorine Maker. You are now equipped to use it to treat water for years to come. Thank you very much. That was very in-depth. I think that probably answered a lot of the questions people have already been asking, but I uh, will start off in the question and answer section. So quite a few questions have come in. I, I won't ask all of them because I think a lot of that will have already just been answered in the video. Uh, one is just the first question came in from quite a few people about where the SE200 is being used now. Um, is it throughout the world? What continents? What number of countries? Just so they can get a general feel for uh, where it's being used. Yeah, good question. Uh, it's being used in, I would say, about three dozen countries uh, on all continents. Uh, We've taken uh, an approach uh, so far of doing just a lot of partnering with organizations and um, most of those organizations work throughout the globe. So uh, it's allowed us to get the, this device um, kind of field trialed and used throughout the world. Um, and we've focused a lot uh, on the disaster response efforts and um, what we were seeing in all of this was that there was a lot of interest, um, primarily in Africa, but, but elsewhere as well, in using these in uh, medical clinics. And so a couple of our partners, um, World Vision, for example, has used these um, in um, small rural clinics throughout Zambia, I believe in about 80 clinics in Zambia. Um, they're being used in a number of clinics in Kenya as well, um, and uh, Mali also, I believe. Um, in the in the clinic setting, and so when we we've, we've been really seeing a lot more interest on the the health facility side, which is why we we decided to partner with uh, with Via on uh, Global Health on this uh, on this product to help kind of bring it to this uh, to this market to you folks. Great, and then there is a pretty detailed description about how it works with power, but there was questions just about what power requirements, whether it's voltage or if there's certain batteries that are too low of power or some that would be too high power. And then a couple people have asked just about surge. Is there any issues with surge protection because there's unstable power in some of these areas? Yeah, good question. Um, so uh, it needs 12 volts, uh, which is the car, like, uh, as I mentioned, a vehicle or a motorcycle battery is, a, is 12 volts. So as long as you have a 12 volt battery, uh, it will it'll operate um, as long as there's enough uh, you know stored power in that. Um, it takes up it runs about five amps. We do um, in probably hard to see it here, but there is a, a five amp fuse in here um, it, with the clip. So if there is a, a, a surge uh, or something, it will um, it, it can blow the fuse. But it's a standard fuse that is is uh, widely available throughout the world, but we've uh, not had any, we've actually only had one of those um, that happened once and it was in a lab and not in the field. So uh, that's, that's one issue or one, um, one way to, to deal with surges. And then if you were to look at some of our accessory options, um, we do for plugging it into wall power, uh, there is, uh, Let's see. We do have a uh, additional power supply um, that will take anything from uh, 110 all the way up to, to 220 volts um, for wall power, and it automatically adjusts and converts that. So there's nothing that the user has to do. And depending on uh, where in the world you are, it comes with uh, a number of different uh, international adapters so that uh, it, it can be used pretty much uh, anywhere in the world with that uh, with that power source there. Great. Uh, and then the, as far as the actual um, treatment of water for specifically people who are asking in Africa, is there anything additional that needs to be added to the water beyond the chlorine to fully treat it? Or is this chlorine alone enough to make this uh, drinkable water? Uh, yeah, good question. So as long as the water isn't too turbid uh, or too cloudy or murky, um, then all you need is the chlorine. And really, to, if, if, you, if people were to do something as simple as straining the water through a, a, a t-shirt, 
that will remove enough of um, that cloudiness in, in, uh, in order to be able to treat the water uh, just with the chlorine. So there's no additional filtration needed. Um, if you do filter, uh, it, it's all obviously going to be um, going to be better and probably improve uh, the taste of the water and other things, but uh, it's not specifically needed. What you will do, uh, and the video showed, you'll use the, the test strip and you'll test the, the water uh, after it's had time to react with the chlorine. And as long as there is that, um, that uh, 1 to, I guess, uh, 0.5 to 2 ppm um, parts per million of chlorine left in the water, then you're, uh, you're, it's safe to, safe to drink. Um, the benefit of, of the chlorine, I should, have, I should say, is that it will it'll take care, it'll clean or kill um, your bacteria and virus as to where a lot of filter options only take out uh, the bacteria and will not treat the virus. So chlorine allows you to kill viruses and then uh, offers that residual um, protection after the fact so that there's not regrowth of, of those bacteria or virus in that water. Great. And then you actually just mentioned the test strips. People have asked about generally what's replacement parts, spare parts, uh, consumables, accessories are needed. Obviously, test strips would be one that once you run out, you would need additional. Is there anything else that is, I guess, frequently purchased with this on an ongoing basis? Uh, no. Uh, there's you have, you have your power options, but there's no replacement parts um, necessary. And so test strips is really it. And we've, we've seen a couple of interesting things with test strips. And that is that the device comes with, with 10 test strips. We do sell replacement packs of 50 test strips uh, or more. And what we've found is almost all but one customer that we've had so far um, have not reordered test strips. And that's because once people have tested the water that they're treating, um, and know that it's working about 10 times, then they don't see the need to continue to do that. They build that trust. Um, but they are available if people want um, want those test strips. Uh, and, and potentially in health facilities, um, you'd want that more than maybe a community uh, kiosk, water kiosk does. But um, there are no specific um, consumables that need to be repurchased outside of the, the, the user purchasing salt. OK, perfect. And then it, it seems like there's not a lot of training necessary for this beyond just watching the video that we just saw. Um, is there anything that comes with it about kind of a step-by-step -step guide, a visual instruction about how it works, just so that our buyers can then onwardly train the customers and users? Yeah, there, we, um, so one of the things that, that we learned from taking this into the field and doing the field testing was that, um, was that we needed to make very simple instructions. And so within the device itself, you can see it's, probably, it's hard to, to actually see it, but there's a sticker on the inside of the box that is your pictorial instruction. So no matter the language or whether people um, can't read, uh, there's as long as they can follow the, the picture instructions, they'll be able to make the chlorine. Uh, and then inside, there's a little bit more in depth picture, uh, pictorial instructions as well. And this uh, is available on our product page on the Via Global Health website as well to be able to share um, or to use in, in any marketing materials you might want. Um, and then additionally on this site as well, we have um, a brochure that we made that is actually set up to be um, printable if anybody wanted to print them for, for marketing purposes. And it's got some frequently asked questions and um, covers some of the, the facts about the device and what, what comes in the kit. Perfect. Uh, and then I, I, I don't know that this would be necessary, but as far as what sterilization needs uh, are there for any of the components, that, do they need to be sterilized after each use? Do, can they be autoclaved if needed? Uh, what's the general need for sterilization? Yeah, there is um, there is no need for sterilization. Uh, the reason being is that the electrolysis process is essentially sterilizing uh, the inside of the of the device by creating the chlorine 
uh, that's in there. So uh, one thing to point out is uh, one question we get a lot is uh, does the water that you put into it have to be clean and, and can the, what type of salt, does it have to be a special salt or anything that goes into it? Um, and it, we've used uh, salt from all over the world. We have not found a salt that doesn't work. Um, and then any water can go into it. So it doesn't have to be purified water going into the device. And that is because going through that electrolysis process will um, essentially kill off anything that's, that's in that water. Um, and so that you don't have to be concerned about making sure that it's pure water going into it. What comes out is going to be a chlorine solution um, that is free of bacteria and, and virus and, and microbes and that you can then treat uh, water with. Perfect. Uh, so we have a lot of questions about warranty, but I, I know you had said it's a one-year warranty that's all parts and, and components. Uh, yeah, so it's a manufacturer's warranty against any defects uh, from manufacturing, so um, circuit board or others. So we um, will absolutely, uh, you know, honor that warranty, and if there's uh, significant issues beyond that, um, we're happy to um, discuss how we can replace devices or whatever uh, is needed. We are um, regarded as a very quality manufacturer. We make this device here um, just below my feet in, uh, in, in our factory here in Seattle. And we've made uh, about, uh, oh, about going on close to 3,000 of these. And we've only had one, one of them break. Um, in, and we stay a five-year shelf life. And most are, have gone on, um, some of the earlier ones have gone on and now are about eight years old uh, that we were testing. And they're still running just fine. So we've had, uh, we've only had to replace one. Uh, and it was due to a circuit board. And it was something that was discovered right away. And, we were, and, and so we were able to easily warranty it. Once, uh, once you've run it a few times, any, any, any bugs or things that are wrong with it will be will be apparent, and then after that, as long as it doesn't get smashed or um, or, or broken in any physical way, uh, there should be nothing that needs to be replaced or that will will die or burn out or anything. Perfect. And you actually just mentioned shelf life, and that uh, inspired someone to ask the question. For the product, there is a five-year shelf life you mentioned, but for the solution itself, is mm -hmm. there any? length of time or shelf life for the solution once it's made that it must be used before it becomes um, expired? Yes, that's a great question. Um, if you, we, so on our storage bottle it says to use within 24 hours. Um, we are going to be revising that guidance soon. Um, that we put that on there because we're being extremely cautious, but if you're especially in a, like a health facility, um, and it's, it's in a, a, a little bit uh, more controlled environment, then um, you, you could, it'll, it'll keep up to about a week. Um, and uh, the, the same thing with the water. So if you're treating the water um, and leaving it open it would, like at a household level and the container is not sealed, then you would probably want to retreat it uh, after about 24 to 48 hours. Um, but if you treat the water and then seal it, then it, it'll be good essentially until you until you go to, to open it um, and, and start using it. But what we've, what we've learned and what we've experienced in the field is, is a couple of things is um, that um, people aren't storing uh, the chlorine for, for long. And that's partially because it makes 50 milliliters, which is enough to treat 200 liters of water, but it's not... Um, it's not a huge amount of chlorine that you, you would need to um, store it. So it's meant to be kind of created and then used within a short period of time. Uh, and when people are treating a jerry can of water, they're using that within typically within 24 hours or, or 48 hours at the longest. And so it's not something where people are storing water for a long, long period of time. So we haven't um, had any issues with um, the storage of either the chlorine or the or the water being an issue um, because of those things. Perfect. Uh, and I'll just I'll, one more question. Otherwise, we'll keep you here all day. But everything else seems like it's been answered. 
Uh, someone is just asking, it sounds like with 30 minutes to wait for the water to be treated and then a, a little bit of time in the beginning and end to test it. What's kind of the, the general total time from start until the time where you can then test the water and use it? Is it just over 30 minutes or just what's a general time frame for the process? For the process, yeah. Well, the whole process of making the chlorine takes about five minutes. Um, okay. and, then, and then if you're do, using it for water treatment, yeah, it's, um, 30 minutes is the recommended time, which gives the, the time to react with, with the water. Um, so if you were to start the process and, and to when you can, you can drink it, it's about uh, 30, you know, about 35 minutes total. Um, if you are using it for, say, in a health facility where you're cleaning, you can, you can use the solution right away for that. Um, and just like you would with any other disinfectant you're using in the facility, you would want to either spray it down or or wipe something down and let it uh, let it sit for you know for about 10 minutes and then it's then it's uh, sanitized uh, at that point. Um, but it can be the coin itself can be used right away. Perfect. Uh, so that's all the questions. Did you have any last thoughts that haven't been covered or anything that you wanted to voice before we finish up? Um, no, I don't. I think so. I mean, I think the product page has a lot of great information, so check that out. Um, we have some marketing support materials on there. We're happy to discuss um, any other materials if there's specific needs that, uh, that any um, distributors might have in terms of what they would want to see marketing materials-wise. We, we're happy to help with that, so just contact uh, via Global Health and, and they can get that request to us and we can see what we can do. We're, we're flexible. We want to um, help you guys all as, as much as, as possible. There's a lot of benefit uh, to this product that we've seen already, um, and a lot of people very excited about it, and so we're excited to see, um, see what everybody can do with it, and we're here to help in any way we can. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time, Patrick. Everyone on the line has, has said thank you for your answers to the questions in the presentation. So from Via Global Health, we want to thank you and MSR Global Health for coming on and, and sharing the product. And as Patrick just mentioned, all of that information that he's referencing can be found here on the product page on viaglobalhealth.com. When you go to the home page or search for the SE200, it's everything from description for specifications for those different resources like the field trials, brochures, instructions, uh, the use chart, all that can be found here, even those FAQs as I mentioned earlier can all be found here on the product page. So all of your resources should be here, but if not, feel free to contact us or request a quote here and we can follow up with additional information. Uh, for anybody that has additional questions about ordering, about pricing, receiving a quote, please feel free to contact me directly. With that, thank you very much and we'll look forward to connecting with you again.